Yes, hello everyone. I am Fran Agolto with the developer relations team here at WP Engine on the headless WordPress side of the house and my co-pilot as always, Jeff Everhart. And today I am super nuxed, stoked to be here, pun intended, because Daniel Rowe is on the show today, the framework architect for Nuxt 3, which was just recently released out um, in stable versions. So uh, what we're going to do today, y'all, is basically, um, and if you can go to the next slide, Jeff, before I go to yeah, like our you. purpose, uh, just a quick etiquette alert and housekeeping for our um, webinar here. Uh, be excellent to one another. It's um, This gets recorded, like Jeff said, and we will upload this on the YouTube channel. Um, so be kind. And this is going to be, we're going to share some um, resources and links um, as Jeff and Daniel are coding in that I will share all the resources in the chat with the Nux Docs, Daniel's um, Twitter, and all the all the good things in Decode. Um, and then without further ado, next slide. So the goals today and the purpose today is we're going to build a basic blog site with Nuxt 3 and WP GraphQL. Uh, we're going to showcase the Nuxt 3 features and the ways of data fetching uh, that you can do in Nuxt. And then we're going to deploy on Atlas. And we do have an hour and 15 minutes. Um, I'm probably made a major faux pas, if you will, by <laughs> only scheduling an hour and 15. But man, I tell you, standing on the shoulders of giants with Daniel and Jeff, I'm sure they can whip up something real quick uh, in that in that time span. So uh, without further ado, it's demo time. Okay, okay. <laughs> awesome. Yep, demo time. So I'm going to exit full screen. I guess that's like, so, so I have a confession to make. Fran, Daniel, and I met a little while ago to sort of talk about what we were going to do here. And the idea was that I was going to have done no preparation beforehand. Um, so that made me full of anxiety. So I, in fact, did a little bit of stuff, but we'll still run through um, everything really, I guess, just fr from the get go. So I'm going to just close out all this other stuff. Um, and then, Daniel, I don't know where should we get started. I mean, I've got the Nux docs open. Uh, I guess maybe I should just run this command and like. Yeah, that will do it. Okay. You run that All right. So and let's see. And I want to call this something different. All right. So we'll go. And if there's any like intro or background you want to give on Nuxt for, for everybody who's here and for, for everybody in the chat, just throw like, are you familiar with Nuxt? Did you work with Nuxt too? If you use Next, like what's your situation? And we can try and make sure that we get your questions answered. Um, but I'll go ahead and kick us off with this creation script. That's yeah, exactly. Um, do I'll keep an eye on 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 chat certainly as well. Um, if anyone has any questions, so um, Nuxt is is a framework for building web apps, uh, and it's it's meant to be intuitive to sort of have that best practice um, built in, so that you don't you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Um, and uh, and but you can customize pretty much anything about it you want. Uh, it uses Vue for the front end uh, layer, and it uses uh, a server rendering engine called Nitro that we built for it, um, which, but which is open source and can be used by other other libraries too. Um, so yeah, the first thing if we just cd in and um, and install the dependencies because that always takes a while. Okay. Uh, oh man. Oh, I love pnpm, but I guess you use whatever you like. Oh, okay. It's so, I, it's so so far. No, you go ahead with npm, but I will just throw in what, my personal. Sell me on pnpm. Is so it just it uses, faster? It's super fast. It uses a single global um, store, and it hard links the store to your project, so it doesn't copy okay. stuff around. It doesn't take any extra space for each extra project oh, you you interesting. use. Oh. Um, and it even thing has things like offline mode, so I can be on a plane and uh, installing dependencies for a new project, and it just works. Um, so okay. it is, it is fantastic. Um, but yes, I your disk space will thank out. you for it, and, yes, and so will I'm your sure. install times. I, I wow. could have installed the depths anyway. <laughs> it could have been done by now, Jeff. Way to go! Um, all right. Well, and I had so we have a question. I don't think our our Alice platform is set up to run pnpm. So does it matter if I like build locally? Do I need that available where I'm going to deploy no, you, as well? Uh, well. What version of Node does Atlas run on? 
Uh, I think they're, they're going to update the default to 18. So in that case, Atlas probably will work fine with PNPM, but all you have to run is core pack enable. Um, uh, Node comes um, with PNPM and Yarn built in now. Okay. So you just have to say core pack enable and it will install the shins for PNPM and Yarn on your system and you can then use them. Mm -hmm. you, there's not a separate install step. So that is a, um, that might work. Uh, on Atlas. I don't know exactly how it's set up, but, uh, but yeah. Okay. 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 Well, yeah, I'll definitely check that out. Okay. Rock on. So I'm actually just going to close this terminal out now that we've got VS code open and I'll just rock, rock it from there. Um, okay. I like your, your setup. Those, those, like, that, 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 those nice colors, the yellow. Yeah. That, so this nice. is just, I think I still, this is whatever West boss is theme is. Uh, so maybe like Col Cobalt too. So give, give him all the credit and all the love. Um, and so we already installed, I'm guessing we can just hit NPM run dev and this is going to start, right? Exactly. Jeff's like, Hey, come on, Daniel. Like, <laughs> what are you doing next? No, I'm just like, so I'm trying to be a newbie. I, I have a little bit of experience with Nux. Like I said, I played around with it. So I'm trying to like man Perfect. manage showing everybody, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be the, the tour guide who already knows the secrets. I know what's happening behind the curtain to some degree. Totally. Um, exactly. So, so. When you run the, oh, is there another? Oh, um, yeah. No, nope, there is. There is. Let me kill that and I'll kill this and we'll do that again. So we've got reliable. We stuff. can also I'm actually um, gonna... pick, we can pick a custom port. Of, oh, no, you've done it. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm going to keep it that way because I've got some stuff on my WordPress site that's tied to localhost 3000. So it's like sort of rewriting some links for us on the back end. Um, okay. So we'll do that just to be consistent. Um, okay, so cool. All right, so this is what a <coughs> basic Nux project looks like. Uh, I guess that's not it. That's still the docs. So let's pop this beauty open and see what we've got. Oh, I, I love cool. the dark mode here. Yeah, yeah. and some of these page. are so so nice. Um, so remove this welcome page by replacing Nux welcome in app.view with your own code. Um, so I guess we come here. And the other thing, Daniel, I've got to admit too, as I sort of started tinkering around with this stuff, I know we discussed like moving over from the options API of view into uh, the composition API. And I am struggling there, man. So I will certainly appreciate some guidance once we get to like the component level stuff about how best to, to make this change. Um, okay, so what should we do from here, y'all? So, um... Right. Okay. So, would you want a bit of a tour of the project um, before we dive into yeah. building? Yeah, I think that'd be great. That's great. Um, so, well, this is the entry point. So, everything that you put in here is going to be rendered by the view part of your app. Um, and so, at the moment, it's a, it's a minimal install. There's no routing, nothing like that. That will all be enabled okay. when we create a pages folder later on. Okay. Um, but right now, anything you put in app view is going to be displayed for for every every route. Um, okay. So, the, if I just do this i don't know well i'm just messing around trying to break Perfect. stuff okay and we see that that gets rendered yeah. outside of our nux welcome template it doesn't have the fancy style sadly yeah that would be be nice if it just uh just worked. <laughs> it would nux config is is empty um you'll you'll you can add okay. things into that when you add uh integrations or things like that um at, at which point um it will become more useful um you can you can configure Nux basically entirely from here, but you shouldn't need to touch it until you start start doing uh, things that are a bit more complex. Okay. Um, the TS config is, is worth looking at that. So there's a lot of stuff that Nux does behind uh, the scenes, including generate a TS config specifically for your project. It has everything from the aliases that are available to you within Nux. Um, like you can import um, from a, a tilde um, or there are some other special imports and and this is all made available to your code editor whether it's vim or vs code or webstorm nice. through this ts config file so um yeah so i mean you can look at it if you want if you're if you're a ts config nerd like me and uh, <laughs> then you can uh, have a look but but um you don't have to um cool. yeah public folder is public these are all all your assets the things that are going to just be um available like hosted alongside your your dynamic content, okay. um, and that's going to be things like Pave icon and robots text and stuff like that. Okay, robots.txt, um, gotcha. And pretty much that's that's all you need to have. Yeah, the .next folder okay, is yeah. mostly types, uh, honestly. So 
there's a whole virtual file system which you can't see. Um, but uh, well, I can show you how to see it if you really want to see it. Um, uh, yeah, I think I need to. Like, what does that even mean? There's a virtual file system that I can't see. <laughs> exactly. You're keeping it from me. Well, um, the, probably <laughs> the, the best way of doing that is to install the uh, experimental Nuxt dev tools, the most beautiful way of doing that. I, I could show okay. you right now. Um, but if you if you basically open up, uh, if you kill the dev server okay. and run um, this command, um, npm install, well, you can do a couple of different ways, but probably the easiest way here is to um, npm install at nuxt forward slash dev tools. Okay, at nuxt, uh, nuxt forward slash dev tools. Yeah. Like okay. that, okay. And, you want to um, do that globally? Uh, well, you can just, in this project is fine. You can install okay. it globally okay. in a different way, but you're probably a dev dependency. So dash D, that's All the right. deal. Dash D. Do. Beautiful. And now if you open um, your Nuxt config file. I'm sure the whole time you... Daniel's looking at this saying this would be done now if it was PNPM. <laughs> um, and if you add uh, a field there called modules and you add the okay. same string at Nuxt uh, dev tools as inside an array of modules. Modules. All right. And this is going to be an array. All right, and so and you said a string that was just at Nux Dev Tools, exactly. And you can restart your your Dev server now. Okay. Um, now, whenever you do this, whenever you add a module to your your Nux config, <clears throat> Nux will generate the the necessary types, um, so that if you were now to um, press Enter in that um, Nux config, uh, like and to add another key. Um, DevTools has okay. there's configuration for it. So if you were to go like uh, not within modules, but as a as a, the next thing, oh, I see. Modules, okay, type, so like down type, here, and type DevTools. Uh, it should be auto completed for you now, um, oh. and you should be able to actually see what the options are that you could pass if you wanted to. And that will be true of okay. any Nuxt module you use, whether it's a GraphQL integration or anything. Um, like it just gets automatically um, added to your types. Um, but we don't need to configure it. That's just okay. um, showing you that, that it does exist. Now, if gotcha, you go back gotcha. to um, to the the uh, the website, um, now you should see at the bottom of the page. Uh, oh, sorry. It, every time you change your next configure, it reboots oh, yeah, yeah. the whole thing. Gotcha. Just to, um, but you should see at the bottom of the page, you have got this little extra Nux logo. Oh. And if you click that, up will pop the um, dev tools, which to be fair, are an early preview. So do, do okay. take that um, in advice. Well, we love early previews of stuff. This is awesome. That's cool. Uh, and you can oh, see all what? kinds of things that basically surface what's going on under the hood for Nuxt. Um, like you don't need to know this. This is like sugar on top, but hopefully it will be, um, uh, it'll be, be nice. So. Oh, wow. And you can just do stuff. So I could click this and this is going to start my, to scaffold yeah, out my pages folder. Oh, wow. Oh, what? So you'll see that that's, that's cool. actually created oh, we a, need that. a pages index. Um, uh, or it's, it's created a pages index that view there, okay. um, which is just Sick. set that up for you. So um, you'll see that it's actually not just created that, but if you go to your app.view file. I'd already implemented the Nuxt page. It's okay. Added, oh, did you add the Nuxt page? It's, it's, no, I think it's added the Nuxt page for you. No, so it did added the Nuxt page for me. The, this was Nuxt oh, welcome before. So I'm going to swap that out. Just yeah, for you. Take this and I'm just going to reorganize this just for a second. Okay. All right. Okay, cool. And so that's a great introduction to maybe like routing in Nuxt and how that works. Um, so, that, so before basically every page you visit would be all rendered by app.view. And actually that's still true. Every page will be rendered by it. But the bit inside Nuxt page is now specific to the route you use. And so okay. we have this pages index. So that's going to render just the, the index. And if you go anywhere else, you'll go 404. Um, and you can create more pages that match different routes. Um, yeah, I'm exactly. Test it out. So you get yeah. a 404 page. Um, and actually, you can have a little look um, at DevTools and, and sort of explore the routing if you, if you want. Um, oh, wow. So um, you can see okay. that there's one route which matches index. 
Um, now, yeah. what other routes are we going to need for this project? What kind of... Um, uh, well, so I think for this, I was going to envision us maybe just on this index dot view will, you know, maybe display like the 10 most recent pages. And then we would have just another route that would accept what in WordPress is called a URI and then, you know, res return with any kind of content type, basically. So really simple, just two pages. Yeah. Um, okay. But we would want a dynamic route for this next one. Yeah. Okay. So basically um, the index will like render the index and then the other route will render every other possible route that hits the site. Yep. Yeah. For, for now. Yeah. Yeah. So, and does so Nuxt will... have a catch all route? Exactly. Does it have... so, okay. Um, okay. Cool. So that's exactly what we want. Syntax for different kinds of things. So if you have like uh, just a dynamic parameter or something like that, it's mm -hmm. single square brackets. Uh, but in this case, we want a catch all. So we use um, single square bracket and then dot, dot, dot. Okay. Uh, All right. You can call call the parameter dot, whatever you want, dot, like slug e, or URI. URI. Yeah. And, uh, then and then dot view. Exactly. Right. Okay, cool. All right, cool. And, and then, I'm assuming that works very similar to the way that like next route yeah. precedence exactly. does, right? It's if it's got a match above the catch all, it's gonna uh yeah. key up on that first. Okay, very cool. Rock on. All right, so that's cool. So we got that stuff squared away uh to some um, degree. You might get a couple of errors until you put some content in the page because it's okay. expected to have a template. Um, and uh, they, I didn't put whatever you want in there. I realize we yeah, haven't built we'll it just... out yet. It's just um, <laughs> for the sake of making it work. Okay. Um, so yeah, right, you've so got that. And that. we could test test that it works maybe. Um, now this should work, right? That... I hope so. Okay, yeah, cool. So there we yeah, go. And actually, right. if you see it, it's in DevTools as well. Um, you can yeah. actually um, navigate instead of typing in now in your URL bar, you can just type it in 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 there up at the top. It says uh, test. Just um, take it back to um, the homepage and press enter. And now it will perform a client side navigation. Oh, actually really okay. cool. that's it's slick. Like, oh, wow. What? Yeah, this is really cool. This is and cool, man. Yeah. There's some sort of VS code integration too. There, I need to actually, check this out. You, you could actually run VS code in your browser. Like you can actually have um, edit your code in your browser inside your app that is displaying the code. Oh, so like man, yeah. this, oh, this is this amazing. Is rad, dude. We live yeah. in such a great time. This yeah. is so cool. Um, this was worth yeah, the price well, of admission folks, which was free. So <laughs> I'm, I'm really, I'm really hyped about this. Pretty cool. It is pretty cool. And I've used um, view dev tools like in the browser. And, and some of that sort of seems similar where I could look at the components and like state and mutations and actions and stuff like that. Um, but this is this is really cool. Well, you can take a look at some of the other things. Like if you click components, you can see the um, components that are available to you in your app. So these are built-ins okay. from Nuxt itself. Um, and then there are some that are added by, in other ways, like from, from libraries. Um, and okay. as you create components in your own project, they'll appear there too. And so you can actually see like which ones are yeah, where where ah. are they? And, oh, and, that's uh, and nice. Find more information. That's very um, nice. If you click imports, you can see some of what um, Nuxt has lots and lots of things that are auto importable. So you can just use them anywhere in your app, and Nuxt will generate the import for it. Um, so you don't you don't have to see it in your code. It doesn't get in the way of you understanding what's going on. You still get full TypeScript support, and this shows you what they are, but also okay. which ones are being used, which ones are actually oh, used nice. in your app. So those are being used uh, within probably the Nux components. You're not using them here. Um, mm -hmm. It may be that we're using them in index, like the generated one is I think using use route. Um, okay. but, but basically, yes, these, these are the, the auto importable um, oh, wow. things. And so there's lots of things you can explore there, but um, yeah. I don't, I, 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 and, and, and yeah, there's some, some pretty cool, cool things we could see, which I maybe will make even more sense once we get further into the project, because then we can actually okay. start to explore the project through it. So if you want cool. to hide that, yeah, you can click X or the, um, there we go. Um, okay, cool. So, well, and so I got one request before we get going on building anything. Could we install, is there, how, how do, would I integrate like Tailwind into this? So I've got sure. some sort of Tailwind components I'll drag and drop. So this can pretty stuff up a little bit. Should be pretty simple. So if you okay. um, again uh, kill your your dev server, All um, right. I mean I can give you the docs as well, but I can also tell you. Um, maybe we can do yeah, both. So if you if you do npm i, um, uh, and then at nuxt.js, 
Um, this one isn't just Nuxt, it's Nuxt.js because it's a community okay. module, um, not a core module. Forward slash Tailwind. Uh, I think it might be Tailwind CSS. CSS. Um, and that will, uh, yeah, go for it. Um, and all you'll right. add that as a module, just like we did the dev tools in your Nuxt config. File. Okay, all right. So NPMI uh, at Nuxt.js slash Tailwind CSS. You hit it and, and you said that we'll add it as a module. Exactly. And that will set up um, Tailwind CSS for you, um, which I think also has a DevTools integration in, interestingly. So we can show you what that looks like in a moment. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and so what, is, what does this look like? This is Nux.js Tailwind, Tailwind CSS. CSS? Okay. Exactly. It's just the name of the package that, that has, okay. has that Perfect. module. Um, I don't know if there's right. any config you want to make for that Tailwind CSS or whether just no, nah, I think the, the, the default good. default out of the box is fine. I'm like the worst CSS writer there in history, so I'm it's, not a designer. Uh, it is amazing for for rapid prototyping, isn't it? You can just sort of throw yeah. things together, and uh, so it it's giving us a warn that there's nothing in app.view or index.view that you know, has a Tailwind class, which is totally fine. Okay, um, okay. But if you if you go back to your, your browser and have a look, it should probably look a little bit different now because now we have Tailwind like reset applied. So the font is a bit different and it's up to the edge of the browser rather yep, than yep, indented. Yep. Um, oh, and wow. you can also see and that we have some dev tab. tools that can actually view the what? generated config um, that matches the Tailwind CSS in your product. Um, okay. And if you configured- oh, wow. If you, if you configured it, um, they would obviously update update that. Um, okay. But come on, Jeff, uh, don't be a monster. Turn on dark mode. That's the turn on dark. Yeah, turn on dark mode, please, Jeff. <laughs> dark mode. Okay, just, there we go. Thank Sorry. You. Sorry. Thank I didn't you. realize. I was so amazed that I just like had access to basically the Tailwind docs inside of these dev tools that I forgot <laughs> that I was burning burning everybody's retinas. Yep. Um, oh, so thank you, thank you. Yeah, I know. Um, okay, cool. All right, so. Oh wow, that is that's really cool. That's uh, I don't have words. Like, uh, yeah, that's that's amazing, Dino. That's super cool. That's such a great affordance for devs. Um, all right, so I let just, me. By bring the way, I want to shout shout out the person oh, yeah. who's responsible for it. By the way, is a guy called Anthony Fu. Um, I don't know. Um, you may have come across him before because he is absolutely prolific prolific in the like the open source ecosystem, not just in Nux but in Vue creates view use, but he also creates other libraries too. So there's a wonderful one called NI, for example, which is you can use and it will figure out what package manager is being used in your project and just use the correct command. Oh, you don't nice. have to even check the lock file. Um, he makes so many things. So check him out. Wow. Um, okay. We'll, we'll definitely, that. we'll, we'll come back when we do show notes. We'll definitely leave some links to his stuff and the dev tools and everything. Cause yeah, yeah that's really, yeah, that's yeah. really cool. Um, all right, so let's, yeah, let me drag over just a couple of these components. Like I said, I, I kind of created a couple beforehand. And then I guess if we got some components to work with, this will uh, give us yeah. something else to look at in the dev tools, right? So, yeah, so, when you create a components folder, everything that goes in there becomes something you can use throughout your app without needing to import it as well. Uh, like in, in, in your view, uh, ooh, that meant to be a directory. Did I break a... something? You uh, added yes, it fail, as a directory. fail, yeah. <laughs> no, not in node modules, come on. Wait, so you're saying, Daniel, if I had a component like layout.view uh, yeah. and I wanted to put that layout into my index page without, say I don't wrap it around the whole app with the underscore, whatever you, you would use to wrap it in view, um, I don't have to at the top of the file import layout from dot dot slash components. I don't have to. You don't have to. Oh, exactly. Oh. So if you're if you're hey Anthony is actually here. Is oh, no, he no, no, really? No, no, no. no. Oh. I, I, like, I, I misread it. Uh, um, um, someone that was just uh, commented with his name, which I oh, read that it. Like, been cool. Anthony has actually commented, which would be perfect. But anyway, oh, I got gotcha. you. Yes, thank you. you if you start typing like angle bracket um, and like header does, in this case, okay. Uh, normally, I would advise not to use um, component names that exactly match the same name. Oh yes, that is a, that is a good site. So let's let's follow Daniel's advice. Uh, so what do we want to call that? Site header, maybe. Yep, or or the header. Sometimes if I if uh, there's the something header. that only exists once in a 
once in a site, like on layout component, I might call it a the, but it's totally, totally your call. Uh, and I guess let's see what happens. Let's agree. So right. that's, uh, yeah, that's still working because it's the, um, uh, okay, now I think if you were to, I think it should recognize that, hover over it. And uh, is, it, is it giving you some information about it? Yeah, so it, it knows it's a okay. new component. And if that component took props, then it would actually display that out for you. But um, it, it, there's no props. It's just a, um, a visual uh, combination. Um, yeah, don't worry about that. You can just close it. Basically, okay. VS Code is spotting that changes are happening uh, in that file. <laughs> and uh, that's because Next is making the changes. It's trying to reinforce my bad, bad practices. OK, well, cool. All right, so, so, so sweet. So we got some sort of header happening there. That's that's really really cool um and i love the fact that it just auto imports the stuff as i was making up some of the demo code I, it was just so nice to not have to add all this boilerplate and just to have it do all of that for me um in the background that's super cool um cool and then i'm gonna just got some other stuff for our index route that i made i'll just kind of like delete this for now um and got a component that i made that we'll just back out for now and we'll just have this sort of grid gap so i guess like the next step in our our making wordpress site journey i guess would be to you know make some sort of graphql call up here to get those 10 most recent posts yeah. Absolutely. Um, and yeah and so let me hop over and i'll kind of like take people on like a tour of the what that wordpress site looks like um you know so yeah and if you in the chat like there there was a question to headless wp yeah. oh, was there there was just a question about and you're about to cover it about the oh, okay. um, the uh capabilities and limitations of wp graphql and what kind of extensive capability it has should you write its your own extension and its functionality but yeah oh okay okay yeah yeah well we can we can dig into a bunch of that so like um I mean, basically in this demo set, I've just got a bunch of posts already created. Um, I used hipster ipsum for all the names. So it's kind of funny and sardonic, if you will. Um, but we've got a bunch of stuff. So we've got some content, right, created with the block editor, um, which I know is a question that we got from some people. It's like, you know, how, what, what does WordPress spit out basically and what can I get back and what can I do with it? Um, so this is all just sort of basic WordPress uh, and using the block editor. Then what I've also done is for all of these posts, I've went and modified them with a plugin called advanced custom field. So by out of the box, you get these two post types in WordPress. You can definitely create more, um, but if you want to do any sort of more advanced data modeling, ACF is a good place to look. Uh, and I can create field groups that exist on particular post types or like posts that are in a particular category. Um, so you can like this one, for example, you know, I'm only showing these two field groups in the post editor. If that post category is equal to food, right. I'm showing the food resources. If it's equal to food, uh, and an upcoming release to this plugin, they're going to release the ability to create po custom post types. So typically that's something you've either needed a second plugin for or you had to actually do in PHP. And so this plugin doing it all is gonna be a game changer. Um, so we do that. And then somebody asked about WP GraphQL and I'll go and look at some of the plugins too um, that we've got installed. Cause I think those are important. So like I mentioned ACF already, that's just the free version. The pro version has a lot more of like fancier field types, um, which I like the repeater field, which is basically like uh, it, you get an array of different objects. So it's really customizable. Um, for whatever you're trying to do. And I also actually have Faust installed. Now Faust is part of, let me see if I've got a tab over here somewhere. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna drag this in. So Faust is something, it's a framework that a WP Engine's working on. It's got two parts. So it's got this WordPress backend that does a bunch of stuff for headless sites. And then it's got a Next.js based front end. Um, but one of the things that it does do is it internally rewrites a bunch of links. So like if I come down here into Faust settings, I'll just open that in a new tab. I basically provide it the URL of my front end site, which is like right now on localhost. So any of the internal content links that I put in the content editor, as I'm like structuring stuff out, will point to the right place. Um, it also does some other magic for you with post previews, um, authenticating and stuff like that. So there's a lot of 
cool stuff in Faust that like my long-term goal is to bring a lot of that goodness that Faust has into all these other frameworks. Cause right now it's kind of tied to Nuxt. Um, but then, you know, we've got WP GraphQL, right? So that's kind of the main nuts and bolts of what we're going to be doing today is interacting with WP GraphQL. Um, and then I, I installed a couple of other plugins, uh, one to surface all the ACF fields into WP GraphQL. Then I also installed one uh, called content blocks that's going to give us back. Like when you look at the block editor, uh, you can either get it back as HTML or you can get it back as structured block data and we can do some stuff with it. And so like, I hope we get enough time at the end to look at some of that because uh, it's really cool. But with WP GraphQL, we can just pop into this GraphQL tab and then we get this sort of interactive like IDE like environment where we can play around with uh, GraphQL and you know com visually compose different queries, run different queries and really experiment with our data in real time. So like this one I got right here, you know, it's just this basic query to get, you know, the posts with the node and let the ID, let me actually get like title. And it's really cool. Cause like, as I start typing, you know, it'll auto complete and say, I want content and like date. I can do all of that and it'll auto complete in this editor. Or if I want to go and I want to just click around stuff and add stuff to that query, you can do that too. Um, but I'll go ahead and just like run this new query, for example, and you can sort of see what we get back. We get back, you know, this array of data that is exactly the shape that we want, right? So this is sort of what makes you able to use uh, GraphQL with your WordPress install. And everything's available at just like your WordPress installation slash GraphQL at that endpoint. So that's kind of where we'll be doing the bulk of our querying today. Um, so let me sort of get rolling and like, I guess we can, I'm going to redo this query and, you know, we'll do, uh, I'll just sort of structure us something to get maybe the first 10 posts, like we said. Um, no, no, we want posts, not post. And then we can maybe like work on integrating that into uh, Nuxt. So we'll get the first posts and then we're going to get those nodes. Um, and then I guess for this, maybe we'll do like title, date, um, we'll get excerpt, which is like an HTML snippet. Um, and then we're going to get the URI because I think we'll want to use that to route uh, to our, our individual post page once it's done. So let me like run that again. Just make sure that comes back the way we want. All right. So we've got nodes, title, date, excerpt, URI. Cool. For all of our posts. Okay, so that's ready to go into a query. And so Daniel, I guess that begs the question, like how, <coughs> what mechanisms in here do I have to do like data fetching, say in this index file? So, yeah. So probably there are so many possible ways of doing this, um, um, but in, in Nux, uh, of, of integrating with GraphQL. Anyway. Okay. Um, so- uh, And I'll I think be... I'm fine with just doing it. Like I don't need a package for this example, maybe. If, unless okay. you recommend one, like we could just do, is there like a fetch, you know, so, like we could just do something that standard. Perfect. Yeah. And honestly, I, I often will do that as well. Like why use a library if you're just going to be performing queries that you sort of know and understand. So mm -hmm. Nux provides a, um, a fetch helper. Um, so okay. you do have access to fetch itself, um, the oh, normal nice. fetch API, but there's also some sugar on top of it, which is dollar sign fetch. Um, okay. So if you were to do something like um, uh, const data equals await dollar sign fetch. Equals. Uh, now. And okay. yeah, that will be auto, auto imported for you, of course. Um, okay. You can uh, use it a lot like the normal fetch um, API. So you can pass it a string of the endpoint, which will be, I guess, your um, WordPress yeah, well, and that was a question. So typically, a lot of times we'll pass this in as an environment variable. Is there a way? How does Nux handle yeah. environment variables? So if you go to your Nux config file, um, Nux supports dynamically overriding these things. Um, okay. And it does it through um, not through environment variables, because you might not be running it somewhere where node exists, okay. uh, but through something called runtime config, which is basically a layer on top of it. So if you create uh. a new key alongside modules called runtime config, and be... um, basically, the first question is, is this a public? This is public. Like, you can use this, this is on the public, client side. Yes. Yeah. So um, 
we have this convention that there's this uh, key. So this is an object runtime config. Okay. Uh, and inside there, create a new object, uh, a new key called public. Um, and all your all right. public stuff can live inside there. So you could and call this. And that's going to be an object too? Uh, public is an object and it can have it, like infinitely nested objects or it can just have keys, whatever it is. Okay. So you can, um, it doesn't have to be uppercase. This can just be a normal camel case um, JavaScript uh, object. So yeah. Um, yeah, perfect. And it could just be a, that string. If you hover yeah. over the, um, you save that. Um, uh, and then hover over the WordPress URL. Um, it will tell you that, that basically this is now the environment variable that will override that. Oh, so cool. if you oh. need to change that at runtime, that environment variable, next public WordPress u underscore URL, all caps, screaming snake case. Um, okay. That is screaming what is going snake to, case. <laughs> that's what is going to, to override that variable for you. But now you have access to it. And also now you okay, have cool. Type safe access to it in your in your page. So if you now go back to that index um, and do const config equals use runtime config. Um, okay, up, so up, above that. Um, I mean, if you're only going to use it once, you can also use it in the use fetch. But like just to show you how it works, it's use okay, runtime yeah, config, yeah. Um, right. and that's a function you call it, and then you um, access the object that comes back. So dot. Um, Oh yeah, you can just grab the whole config and then use it in the thing. So, but basically, uh, you so then have type safe access to that. So, if you in in fetch do like config dot public, um, uh, that and then public dot WordPress URL, and yeah. it will actually right. uh, complete that for you, and it knows it's a string. So, um, you basically, if at some point you drop that and you no longer have that in your next config file, TypeScript will scream at, about this in your components as well. So you don't have the, the downside of sort of magic undefined uh, process uh, environment variables that may or may not exist. Okay. So in this case, now the second um, parameter is an option and you can pass um, yeah. all the fetch options that you would normally so do, do along a, with some others too. Yeah. To a post, um, and then I guess we'll need a body that's gonna be our query. Um, and I think I recall, right, do we need to stringify this or? You don't no. need to stringify this. So it will be automatically oh, yes. stringified for this helper function, as well as the return okay. will be automatically passed. Awesome. So I'm just going to copy this query and we'll go ahead and dump that into here. Kind of reformat just a little bit. Okay. All right. So, I mean, right. And now data should be what what I expect it to be. Correct, anybody see anything I'm doing wrong? Nope, I think, looks good I guess let's hit it and let's see, see what happens. Well, I got a blank screen, so that's never good. Um, so is, is it just setup. a string? Is body just meant to be a string? Or is it meant to be an object with- Ah, uh, yes, you're right. Three? No, it should be an object. That is a very good call. Um, yes, so yeah, let's do that and- Yep, we need that query key, and that's why. And then that will be our query. Now I've messed everything up, which is the joy of this. And Always the fun of live fetch. coding, right? Yeah. It, it's it not is. Live, it's it not is. live coding if you don't. I think the um, <laughs> jack the everything up. The line, the line above it. So uh, if you move that back this one, tick, yeah, up to the previous line, I think. Ah, there we go. And then uh, the we need one more. We need one more uh, bracket after the back pick, I think. Yeah, there we go. It doesn't have to be on the same line, but yeah, exactly. I think that should work. Um, I think that should work. Oh well, no! Yeah, that's also safe. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll stop fussing in the name of. Yep. Let's see if we get it. Got that. Well, nothing so, nothing happened. Hey. Okay. Great. Well, hey. no, no error. Okay, cool. Cool. So, um, um, let's just check if it came back with anything, right? Just stick it in the template and put, you know, um curly two, double curly braces and then uh, data, data and see see it, see there's something there. Um all right. Perfect. Great. Hey, we're getting back, baby. 
<laughs> Sorry. celebrate this. Um, so there, yes. there are a couple of things. Now, um, we're using this fetch helper, which is your go-to um, fetch helper. Um, okay. But it's going to run it every time the code runs. So every time the okay. function runs, which means it will run it on the server, it will run it on the client, which is not what we want. We want it to run only once. So if it runs on the server, we don't need to run it again on a client. Mm -hmm. Ideally, the whole point is this should not be making constant requests. <clears throat> So the easiest thing to do is wrap is just replace the dollar sign fetch call with a next composable called use fetch. So okay. um, you can just type uh, use capital fetch. Um, and now that's going to basically handle this for you. Um, so on the server, it will, it will fetch it. It will include it in your HTML and then it won't fetch it again in the client. The only oh, thing is okay. it's, it's going to return um, not just the data, but actually an object of things. Oh, yes. So okay. Structured data from the response. It will also do return right. like a refresh property if you need to refresh it. Yeah, I saw object. that in the docs. Could you speak to how somebody might use that? Because I thought that was a really neat feature. Um, um, the refresh one. So, well, there are a couple of things that you might um, might want to do, um, but uh, so maybe if you change a query parameter or something like that, so you want a pagination type thing. But actually, okay. we even we even support. Um, like reactive objects. So if you pass a reactive object in to use fetch, it will automatically refetch when the the, the object changes. Okay. Um, so you can actually just not worry about that and just directly increment the, the page counter. But if for some reason you it's not a reactive object uh, and you want to handle it manually, you can do that with a refresh. Um, you could also defer the initial fetch by setting immediate false and then you can call execute uh, which is an alias to refresh to actually perform the first one. Sure. But there are lots of options there, um, if you, depending okay. on what you need, need this function to do. But but what this will do is now it won't fetch again on on a client. So it will okay, just gotcha. uh, just get server you the data. Now what I would say is this is an index page and a lot of data in the, actually this is GraphQL, so you can change that. But um, but often what I would tell people to do is use the transform. Uh, option within the um, use fetch, which lets them, you, you can actually be very granular about how you want to transform this data um, oh, so neat. that okay. you're not including more than you need in your payload. Because really, you should only have what's required to actually display the page. That okay. is the data you need to have. But I mean, in this case, I guess we're displaying all of it, right? So um, uh, it's Yeah, for the just... most part. I mean, I guess we could technically just, like if we didn't want the excerpt, we could just remove that from the query. I'm kind of interested though, where I'm just gonna hop out. Is that in the doc somewhere? We could look at an example of the transform or should we do one here? That sounds kind of interesting. Um, yeah, we, we totally could um, either way. Um, so you can pass uh, this just alongside uh, method in body just as another option um, called okay. uh, transform. <laughs> and it's gonna receive the data that's coming in um, and it's going to return whatever data you want to go out. So okay. And so this case, is a callback? Yes. So it will be called with the data when it comes okay. in. Okay. In this case, um, like you've got uh you've got, I guess one thing you could do is you could unnest the data property. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask is could we do like so really I want to get this nodes, you know, so I want data dot data dot post dot nodes and could we make that happen? Yeah, through this transform thing? Oh, wow. Okay. So that would just so, be really like return data dot data dot post dot nodes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, sweet. Uh, data is a type of known type script. It doesn't know, agree with me. which is quite right. Now, you, there are a couple of modules with Nux that will basically give you type safety for GraphQL like okay. automatically. So um, obviously we don't, have to do that right now and maybe now is not the right time because you've got uh, sort of limited time but basically you can install the module point it at your endpoint and it will generate all the types matching the schema and then uh, you can just so there's one which uh, might be useful to check out called next graphql client okay um, where you can I'm basically just gonna open up. i just got to see this because i think that would be super helpful this one this first one or this second one the first one. I think it's probably okay. the same, same one. It's the, the um, website. Yeah, because that is one of the nice parts about the W, like 
the WP GraphQL versus say the REST APIs, like everything is really strongly cut type. That's all, all the schema is documented. So that would probably be really helpful for a lot of folks. Um, so, cool. Um, all right. You can have a look at the playground, for example, in the repository there. Um, and I think there's even a preview open in stack blitz, but basically um, the, the example is super minimal. Um, I'm not sure it works because of cores at the moment in the, in the stack blitz, but oh, okay. um, you can see you have a queries folder and any query you create in there get, gets turned into a composable. So that query launches. If you have a look in app.view, you can see oh, that they're okay. using that. They're just saying use async Q GQL operation launches. Okay. And then it actually has type access to the data coming back from that query, um, which is pretty cool. That is but really cool. The, the playground isn't working, but the, the module okay. is cool. Okay. We will definitely check out the module, um, put it in our back pocket too. Yeah, that's really neat. Um, that's neat. There, are, there are others. One way to, um, just to say, if you're wanting to explore what uh, modules there are in Next, if you go back to the Next Docs site, at the very top of the page, there's a modules um, tab, and you can actually search by a number of different things. So you could search for GraphQL, for example, um, and you'll see okay. that there are five different ones there. Oh. Um, a few of them are more generic. Um, there are also other libraries that don't have modules that you could just easily use, like Villas is a fun um, uh, GraphQL, uh, minimal GraphQL um, client, um, but it doesn't come with all the type type stuff that we, that okay. we like so much in Next. But yeah, so there's there's stuff out there module wise. That's awesome. I know even just this transform is super handy because uh, I was like, yeah, it, it's it's that's very nice just getting that data back exactly how I want it. Um, right there so i guess now like to you display assert, this um as as a, a cheap um thing you can assert the type so you could say like as um but you don't have to you don't have to sorry um but if you <laughs> wanted to at the moment data will be typed as probably any or unknown like okay uh, and but if you wanted to have slightly better types even just manually um like we know what the, this is this is an array of title and, data except in url so you could say um uh, after nodes space as array um i'm assuming this is a typescript file but um and then sort of angle brackets and then an object syntax okay exactly uh curly braces and then just say like uh, oh actually we can make this simple because they're all strings right so yep. um instead of instead of the object syntax just get rid of that and say capital record And then num um, another angle brackets. Exactly. And then, then string in uh, here. and then uh, we, we can actually make it more specific. We can say uh, like single quotes or any kind of quotes, quotes, uh, title. So single quotes, are, uh, okay, single yeah. title. Uh, and then another single quote and then a pipe uh, and then another single quote and then date. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm butchering this. All right. So, and then you want to pipe. Yeah. And then, uh, like all of the keys basically. Oh, gotcha. Um, okay. Nope. Um, watch, watch everybody. This is Jeff learning, learning TypeScript fundamentals live. Um, what else do we got in there? Excerpt. Excerpt. Um, uh, and then you are got you are I. Yeah. Okay. Right. And then uh, after that URI um, quote, put a comma and then say lowercase string. <clears throat> so that will now, oh. now be a fully typed um, response for like, so if you go now and hover over the top data, not in the transform. This one. That one. Oh, wow. Okay. Nice. For you. So oh, cool. now in your template, um, you should now be able to use these in a slightly more typey way. Like okay. go through this. Much better to use a client that, that types it by reference to the actual GraphQL schema. And that's okay. half the point of GraphQL, right? You shouldn't yes, need yes. to buy a type for a GraphQL thing. But just for DX now. Um, right. So yeah, do we want to display some posts? Like some Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I've got let me uh grab um my I got a post component over here on another screen. So let me grab that real quick. And we'll just suck that over. Um, so we're gonna do components, and then this is gonna be post. 
And then I'll copy this in here, um, post URI, and then we're just passing in post object. Uh, and anything I did wrong in here with, with the setup and defining props, this was just a new thing for me. It's looking, switching from the options API, everything was so like config object base that all of the functions were, it's like, oh man, I gotta go with relook up everything. Is there a better way to do this? This is great. Um, you can make it um, more typey by copying that type that we created in the other file um, okay. if you wanted. Uh, just the record bit, not the array, but um, exactly, yeah. And so what we could do, there's a slightly different syntax for def define props if you want to do that, is actually delete the content of define props. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you just have an empty uh, function call. Uh, and then before the opening um, parenthesis, um, put those double angle brackets again um, and uh, put an object, um, like the, the curly braces. Programming is so <laughs> awkward for talking, right? Like, yeah, could you please, yeah. I mean, the curly braces. Yes. And then, yes. you know, the thing um, is it's very good for typing and terrible <laughs> for talking. Um, so actually only one set of um, okay. the angle brackets. Uh, and All then right. you, what you want is uh, you can press enter uh, and say post uh, colon uh, and then paste the type that you pasted from the other file. Okay, um, cool. And that will give you, uh, it will, it will, um, oh, th sorry, this needs to be a lang CS file as well uh, for this, this to work. Ah, uh, I see. Uh, okay, but, gotcha. But basically, view does this order actually... matter here? No. no view, okay. view will, will actually uh, read the type. And it will validate the incoming, um, like not down to the level of what keys it has, but it will it will see this is an object and it will validate the um, incoming type. Okay, so you, perfect. You'll get, um, but you will now also if you have a post title, you should see that it's a string, for example, and it should also like in the in. Ah, uh, I see. Thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Property title string. Ah, yeah. Cool. We got some. So, what's the error with the transform data object on index? I yeah, it I was think a that TS. Is. It was TS. Yeah, it's a yeah. TypeScript is angry. Yeah. Yeah, you can you Which can I... type it as any or something like that. Um, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm fine with looking okay. at errors. We can just keep. Um, okay, so cool. So that that should all work, right? All right, my, nothing seems off there. Um, and so then down here, uh, let's. Yep, we're going to use the post component. And I love that I don't have to import it. Um, and what's that helpful addition? It's just it's telling, telling me that it... That there is a required prop post okay. for that component. And so you, you need to pass a post. Um, All right. So, and we would still, so this would still be the same, right? Like V4. Okay. Exactly. Post and posts. Um, well, no, sorry, data. And then I guess we need a key, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What is it? Your URI, is that the most unique thing? Uh, yes, that is probably the most unique thing. Um, okay, and then, and then I can delete this now, right? No, it doesn't seem to just, want me to delete it's just this. telling you. I don't think it's actually in uh, the... Okay, I, think I wasn't sure do... if it's like an error or... If it's fine, I can leave it there. Um, Vola, I think it'll disappear in a moment when you type uh, space colon post equals post. And I think then it will disappear as a thing. But we'll see. Maybe yeah. not. Uh, it does. Oh, no, okay, it, it, nice. does. Oh, I see it, it did. Okay, cool. Yep. Oh, and something. I see. Ooh, got nice. Some stuff yeah. rendering. Beautiful. All right. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so one thing, cool. maybe we want to re reformat that date real quick um so with these curly brackets can i just like write any arbitrary javascript inside of them yeah does that work if i wanted to transform that date okay so we could do something like you know new new date yeah uh now, and let's say is this gonna work now i feel i know what you're gonna do but i i feel i i have to warn you oh please do <laughs> Because um, this is going to work fine, probably on your local machine, um, because you're American. And okay. probably that means that your uh, 
your node and your browser are going to have the same locale. But anywhere else, it's probably going to cause a hydration error because in like the HTML from the server is going to have a different string in it than the HTML in the client because okay. all, it, it might be a different. Well, the new date. Actually, no, no, it, it, it would probably be fine. Actually, the way you're doing it, it'd probably be fine. Um, I'm just full of this particular problem. So I've, I've actually just written a Nuxt module called Nuxt Time, which provides a sort of SSR safe um, component for rendering dates. Um, okay. With, with using the like the locale date formatter, so you can actually use it. You can render it in the user's locale in an SSR safe kind of way. We don't have to do that now. Um, but but oh, um, it, I I see. So if I call that's what you're saying. If I call this on the server, it's one thing versus the international person who is in a total another locale. Ah, exactly. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Okay. But if you're just so, if you're just going to do like get full year, then that is obviously fine. Okay. Um, oh man, yeah. Wow, that just a whole lot of complexity dawned on me that maybe I've been ignoring. Um. But it will work fine now. Um, but okay. check out check check out my module if you if you're wanting to do this. Um, uh, it it might 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 cause some might help a little bit. Um, okay. It's basically just a, a drop in Nux time component, and you just pass the options. You pass the date, and you pass the options to it, and say uh, like the things that you would pass to international um, mm -hmm. like date time format, like those options you pass to it, and it just uh, it basically does a quick pass on the client. Before the the, um, the page is even rendered, like instantaneously, okay. um, outside to, to swap out the server rendered text with the one that matches the user's locale. So there's no flash, nothing. They just it looks to them as though it was always perfectly rendered with their locale. Oh, cool! It works. Cool. Yeah. It works with like SSG and um, it doesn't have to be a real server. So it's not it's not okay. like protecting their locale on the server. It's rendering one thing on the server that's good enough for. Um, SEO, which is like mm -hmm. the locale of the server, but then on the on, on the client, it swaps it out for their actual locale. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Okay. That's really cool. Jeff Daniel, just a time check. Uh, there is 15 minutes left. I don't know if you guys want to go over. Oh, I'm wow. down, but it's up to you guys. Yep. I'm down though. But is it really? Yep. Yeah. Sure. Um. Yeah. So let's. Well. Cool. All right. Now. Now that that gets. I, I mean, I think we got the index page pretty much done, right? I mean. Yeah, um, that looks good to me. That looks yeah, the titles all right. The like, I'm yeah, it links to hiding it. my yeah. terrible CSS skills behind Tailwind's I, excellence. Jeff, I Thank think you. those look very pretty, Jeff. So, I, but I, that's I, what I'm saying. Like, I had to I, do I, nothing for this. I was just like, oh, here's a <laughs> gradient. Here's so, some rounding. Thanks. Like, it was it was awesome. Um, okay, so cool. So yeah, given that, yeah, I'm down to go over to. Um, but I also want to be respectful of everybody else. So, like see if we can we can get through in the next couple of minutes like because i think all of our post stuff is good um so i think it'd really be like the uri piece next right yeah. the tackle on this template dynamic route to the you know, um, single post page okay and let me let me drag some stuff i got some stuff off screen for that uh let's yeah i'm just gonna suck this whole template in and we'll start there there will obviously be some stuff that uh, I'm just going to strip out for now. Oh, cool. We'll, we'll re we'll re add. Um, so I was just messing around and yeah, maybe we can get into some of the block stuff because yeah, that's kind of interesting, but cool. I'll go ahead and delete that right now. Cause I don't have that component. Um, uh, let's take that out too for right now. I'm so sorry. I'm just talking and talking. So, oh I'm no, this is off. all, this is all gold, Daniel. This is all, no, gold. this is great. I, love... I mean, this is needed for, and yeah. like I said, this is recorded because I'm going to rewatch this and then follow for on. Sure. For sure. <laughs> um, okay. So maybe then just in the name of time, I might just sort of, so you've already talked about this part, right. And how, how we want to use, um, use fetch. So I got to use fetch call over here. I'm just going to pull in and then, um, we can like skip us ahead a little bit. Let's see. Script setup. All right. No, come down here. Let's dump all that in there. Whoa. And with organization of this, do you do script go first? Template go first? What do you like doing? It's just I a preference to, thing. 
I tend to put script setup. Um, so I always used to be template script style, but now okay. I tend to put um, script setup first because script setup can be quite short um, and it, it describes the logic that's then used in the template, which is can okay. be the next one. Um, in this oh, case, oh. I like the, Maybe the not, query is quite that's... long. Yeah, uh, it's it's to totally up to you. Um, okay. Well, yeah, so yeah, we'll just leave it down here for now because um, it is kind of gnarly. And so let me uh, scroll in here because I know we had a couple of questions too about you know how to get different types of data. On uh, I some people on Twitter asked some questions, so I want to try and make sure that we get that into the recording. Um, so let me see. I think I actually have this query still over in Graphical. Um, if I open that up and so this is our query down here, right? And so uh, we, we see a lot of people do headless WordPress a lot of different ways. And so like, it's a flexible CMS, like you can do whatever you want. Um, but one of the patterns that we're starting to recommend to people is the idea that instead of like using, say, a slug to identify a post type, which has some complications because like, those don't all, they're not all unique in all instances. Um, that we're asking people to lean into this like URI method, which really sort of lets WordPress handle your routes as you create different pieces of content. So if I create a custom post type, for example, you know, that gets its own route. It's like race it, you know, if I had like a review post type, you know, slash review slash title of that is, you know, URI. Um, so it gets, it, it lets, it lets everybody be a little bit flexible, but it can result in some kind of crazy queries. And so here we're doing an example of that, right? Where we we're passing in the URI that we're getting from, you know, Nux from WordPress, uh, and then using that URI to get basically like look across all of the different types of content and saying, which piece of content has this URI. And then once we get that, we sort of have these different fragments that we'll drill down into. Well, if it's a post, return me these fields. If it's a page, return me these fields. So you kind of have like a centralized place to manage that. So you can see that that's what's happening here, right? I'm using this get node by URI um, query, passing in the URI, and then I've got this fragment on the post. Um, and I'm, you know, get me the ID, the title, the date, content, stuff we've seen already. And this is like the rendered HTML. Um, but then I already, I also had some people ask about, well, how do you work with blocks, right? Because if we've got like, I'll, let me run this query and uh, we'll get Artisan Airplant Chicharrones post and I'll sort of show what that looks like. So for most of what people do with headless WordPress, people are, you know, just using the content basically as it comes back, right? We get back this HTML blob and then we're echoing it out. And like, maybe we have some styles in our front end app that correspond to some of the stuff that some of the markup that WordPress has already generated for us. Um, but people have always been looking for a more flexible, more component-driven approach to do that, right? Because like if I do that right here, you can sort of see, um, and let me actually just go ahead and sort of start implementing that stuff. I'm actually going to come down here now that you taught me about the transform option. I'm going to do that real quick because um, that was really nice. And so I should, let me remind myself. So we got transform, that takes in data. And then that's just going to return, I think we want data.data.node by URI. Let's see what we got over here. Data.data.node by URI. Yep. And then that's going to be our, our thing. Um, okay. So cool. That's perfect. That's great. All right. And then like, say here, you know, I'm going to echo out, I guess, data.title. And then in here, and the actual body of my article, um, we'll want to dump some HTML. So I guess I'll use that the HTML directive and then that's going to get data.content. Um, and then I've got this other stuff for this block content down here. Um, and I'll sort of see what that looks like if we click through. So Jeff, would you have to use that escape hatch, the dangerously set uh, inner or nah? On the uh, I mean, I think that's, no. it's kind of the equivalent, right? Okay. I don't know if it's as dangerous, <laughs> but. Uh, it's, you don't have to, to set anything. Um, okay. But yeah, we do have to get a URI because at the moment. Yes, yes, have to yes. Get it from the um, the root. So, okay. uh, and there is, there is a thing that you have to know, which I, Jeff probably doesn't okay. know. Okay. Um, um, which is, but, but just to say the, um, 
uh, the URI. So th in this case, the URI is going to be use root. Um, and then we call that, that's the function. And then we can do dot params dot URI. Okay, so we'll do URI equals root dot params dot URI. But URI is a, an array. Normally, um, a param is going to be a string, but in this case, it's a catch-all, which means it could have any number of segments. So ah. it's an array of those segments. So in this case, we prob we want to basically <clears throat> do dot join uh, okay. and then like forward slash probably, and that will reconstitute back the um, the URI into a string. So I did um, not know that because in my example, I did not use the catch-all route. Um, but no, that is that is a great call out. So let's see if that works the way we expect. Ah, solid. Okay. Super cool. amazing. Like yeah. It should like and to the person who was asking about the HTML thing, it's it is it's safe in that you control the HTML. If you let any user control that HTML, then it is totally unsafe. So it, <laughs> you know it's it's a it's the um what's why you have to take such care with that directive but i think in this case it should be okay like your own yeah. cms should be safe <laughs> it should and wordpress has a lot of built-in safeguards to do that stuff already so like if i try to put some script tags directly like it sanitizes a lot of that stuff um so even if like somebody did get in there and was like i'm gonna add this script tag like it doesn't always hmm. you know it's not doesn't mean it's gonna make it all the way into the markup this is cool um yeah so that's really cool that's um, neat. but so that's, that's just content. like the yeah well so that's not the block content this is just the html um right and so that's what a lot of people do and for a while it was really difficult to get data about the blocks because <coughs> they weren't actually registered with the server in wordpress and i won't go into like a long aside here because it'll take forever to explain um, but that's sort of how WordPress works, right? It's like you have this block editor thing where as I come down, like, you know, I add more blocks, I can drag and drop them around, like, and we get some options. These are called core blocks, but developers can also basically using React and WordPress's own block packages, build additional blocks that augment this editing space. So it's actually become really kind of cool. Like if you think about what WordPress was back five or six years ago with like, the, the, you know, the WYSIWYG editor, it's come a long way and the block editor stabilized a lot. So whether it makes you angry or doesn't, um, I think it's kind of cool now and offers a lot of possibilities. Um, but it was hard to get that data for use cases like this, right? Because it kind of just, they, they've eschewed some like, maybe, I don't know, best practices about how to define blocks and stuff like that for a while. And it was all done on the client, right? So just sort of save this HTML. And this is like a JavaScript app that processes at all. But they've walked that back and they've started registering the stuff on the server. And as a consequence, that means that we as people who are developing headless sites can get back better data from things like WP GraphQL. Um, so we've got, you know, this editor blocks property that yeah. I can tap into. And then I can sort of do the same thing, right? I'm going to get back this list of editor blocks. Um, which is basically just in a array, like an ordered array of these blocks in their different attributes. Um, and so am I in the right post? No, let me run the my query three. Let's look at that, right? So we see the content and we see that. Um, but then down here, we get this editor blocks. And like I said, that's an array, right? And so we've got, you know, the first thing in that post is this core paragraph. It's got a client ID. Then I've got the rendered HTML. I can get like CSS class names off of it if I want to. So it makes that integration between the block editor and your decoupled site way tighter. Um, and like we got content there and core image, you know, that's got attributes like source and alt text that I can use and basically like make my own component and, and redisplay that. Um, so I guess we could walk through some of that because uh, it's kind of neat. And right now, like I'll, let me pull some tabs in. Cause like I mentioned Faust earlier, that's like, that's basically where WP engines invest in a ton of their money in terms of developing like a framework to do some of this stuff. So they've got this Faust blocks package, which unfortunately is a react based sort of component library that you could pull into like a headless project in next or something else. And like, you know, just pass it to this blocks provider thing where in, in Nux will sort of need to recreate some stuff 
Um, but I did that pretty easily. And let me just um, do that real quick. And I'm just going to quick and dirty copy over some of these components. So, you know, I have this like block renderer. And the tough thing is that each one of these things can have um, inner blocks. And so it's nested and like it's got to get real recursive if you're going to do it right. Mm -hmm. um, See, I'm not getting any errors there. So let's do that. And then let's do, got a block dot view. I'm just going to make these all real quick. And then uh, we got core paragraph type. And then we'll do one more that is a uh, core image. That would be cool, Jeff, if we had a uh, a Nuxt version of Faust. Oh, I mean, I'm definitely, well, yeah, I don't know if we'll get a Nuxt version. Like, I think a lot of the stuff with Faust could work with Nuxt, though, too, because it's like okay. just APIs. Just APIs, yeah. Nuxt has a way to deal with cookies and authentication stuff. And, like, so maybe we can have Daniel on again. He can help us work through how to make some of those cool things work. Cause yeah, I mean, Nux, like it'll, it'll allow you to authenticate with the WordPress instance and, yeah. you know, do like protected mutations and stuff. Um, so it's kind of neat. It's very cool. Honestly, I'm loving the, the um, just what you've shown in terms of the, the way you can get the blocks, for example. Um, like it, it feels like this is so much easier and simpler than when I was integrating with WordPress as a headless, <laughs> headless EMS. Like this, it, this feels nice. It, it has. And like, I mean, WP Engine has really come doubled down on making this ecosystem a lot better. Um, and, you know, like, I'm not just saying that because I work here. Like, that's one of the reasons I came to work here was because I was like, wow, they've made this cool. And like, sadly, I know we're like at time and haven't even shown the Atlas part, which to some degree, like simplifies a lot of this stuff for people. Um, but yeah, so like now that I've got this block renderer, right, uh, you know, it implements this block template. And then inside of the block, basically, we're just like looking at the name of the block and then choosing what to render, passing that block data in. You can see like core paragraph, basic, all it really does is, is you know, sets the HTML to the content in the image kind of similarly just, um, you know, gets the source, gets the alt text and then displays that. But I, I would love to see on a long enough timeline, like a, a view library of yeah. WordPress blocks um, as well, because it, it'd be really cool. So now if we come back down in here, I think if we just oh, this will be cool. Yeah, re-implement, yeah. well, let's see if it works, because I was messing around. I, I just started working on this this come afternoon because I was kind of excited about it and somebody asked me. Uh, and then what am I doing here? I'm passing blocks, I think is, and I should, should be using types because then I would have more knowledge about what I'm doing here. So blocks, and I think I just want to pass editor blocks, right? So that's just data editor blocks. And it's not going to be anything fancy if it does work. It's just, you know, a different cool. way of rendering blocks. Nice. Yeah. Um, and that's cool because like then I think yeah. it gives devs a lot more like you can you can go and you can customize this stuff way easier. If there is, if there are things like, and I didn't show uh, some sophisticated examples, but like I said, if we look back at some of the data in here, you know, like some of these have like CSS class names that you could set in WordPress. So like you, you could do tailwind classes directly on your blocks and just have them automatically appear in here. And, you know, some of what the block editor gives is like, we can just create like, all right, I've got this CTA block and it has all this stuff already sort of pre-baked into it that somebody a content editor can come and deploy and just, you know, enter or whatever. Um, and that's great. And so it's kind of cool. Um, definitely, if you mess around with, I'll throw you this, the link to that plugin, this WP GraphQL content blocks <coughs> extension. It's an extension for WP GraphQL. It is very early. So if you use it, use it as like a hobbyist messing around. Um, we just had some breaking changes. Because the idea is that eventually, hopefully, this could make its way into GraphQL core, and you just have one sort of core plugin. Um, but they're working on that all right yeah. now, so it's very still experimental. But we would love feedback on what you all would need to see to kind of like make that work for uh, whatever headless stuff you're doing. Um, um, Jeff, there was a question um, from Kent. He said, 
And I'm wondering if Yoast That's SEO plugin question. had an, ex yeah. Yeah. Um, link. Yeah. So we'll drop the link in the chat, um, yeah. Stuart. And to answer uh, Kent's question. Yeah. So there's a number of different, what I would do if, if like you're interested in using WP GraphQL and maybe I was kind of interested in this question too. So maybe Daniel, you could guide us on the NUC side of things. There's a, a lot of extensions here. It's like rank math SEO is one. I think if I search for Yoast. Yoast, WP GraphQL uh, Yoast. Yeah. yeah, it just adds all that stuff to the schema for you. Um, so you install both plugins yep. and you're off to the races and it gets added to GraphQL. Yep. Um, but yeah, like how would I, so say say we did want to implement some of that stuff. What would Nuxus so, method of like SEO and header stuff? So we've got some of the data already, um, just from your, the query you've already given, I think. We've got ID, um, oh, sorry, we've got title, date. Yep. <clears throat> so we can do that, for example. Okay. So if you go to the bottom where we have that data, um, you can uh, basically use a composable called use head. Um, so okay. it will have to be after after that, but you could say um, just call use head and pass in an object, um, and you can, for example, pass in um, it can have a title property, which you could set to like data dot value dot title. I think if 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 it's what I think it is, um, and I think then if you go back to your page, you'll now see that the title is set in the tab, um, okay. uh, which ah, obviously yes. uh oh. Will also be true and you can do it the same with meta tags link tags all of that okay um, so okay it is also possible to do that in the template so like you can use meta script well don't, don't use script but use uh you know meta oh, like... link, whatever you want like uh, a component <clears throat> it is a component. okay just make it capitalize it um and it will not put it there but actually put it in the head but um, oh, personally, I would always use use head rather than using it in the template. It yeah, that seems cleaner to me. Yeah. So yeah, you could do whatever you want there. So put whatever meta tags, whatever link tags, and they are object, like uh, those meta and link will be arrays of objects. Um, okay. So if Yoast is giving you back strings, you might need to pass it. Um, or or you can do it in a different way. If Yoast is giving you strings, you can... You can um, you can add it to your, your head in a, in a different way, but uh, it's okay. a little bit more, more complicated. Um, I think I saw that. It was like a tr transformation or something kind of like, I, I don't know, I'm using words now that have broad meanings. So <laughs> uh, let's see, get started. Yeah, because this, and this section is really good, y'all. Oh, there so it is, SEO and Meta. About that. Yeah. Oh. yeah, there's some cool stuff here. Uh, yeah, use head. And that's all really neat. I really like the composable pattern. I love not, I got to say it again. I love not importing anything. I can just yeah. use stuff and just keep going. Like that's all super, super nice ergonomics, I guess. Um, but yeah. Check out the use SEO method because that is a more ergonomic way of passing it rather than the array. Okay. That I just talked about because you can, things like org title where you would normally be doing, okay, I have to meta property and it's got, you know, mm -hmm. what is it? Property and that like you don't have to worry about that you just yeah what it should be i uh, have messed it, that up more than once exactly why isn't it working really <laughs> yeah um, yeah so that is cool nice. okay okay awesome awesome um all right so what else should we do y'all that kind of i mean we got the basics down basics yeah jeff can you push yeah. this up into a public repo there was a question earlier saying hey is jeff gonna push this up and then yeah for sure so my plan yep we'll push this up into a public repo and then i'm probably going to sort of write a blog post about this we've obviously got the the recording of this that will go uh, on our youtube but yeah let's okay. let's actually go ahead and do that now i mean there's okay, no yeah, reason push not it up to and let's i don't know if you want to deploy it too but in your other page maybe the uri i think you still have header instead of the header because we renamed that early on i think do. it's complaining uh, about yes it. thank you It's how, how good I am at ignoring <laughs> machines complaining. Uh, yeah, and so let me hit that one more time. Um, now, just well, make sure one, that works. It's one thing I probably should say that one thing you can do here is pre-render it. You can pre-render the whole thing so you don't have a server and it's just static HTML. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. And 
if we do that, it will actually then not call your your endpoint at all. It will be just it will produce payload files which include it um, as part of your deployed site. So if you were to run oh, wow. npm run oh, npm run generate, um, then uh, we can see what will happen. Uh, you can and do we I need mean, to can... do that to like do we need is there a get static paths kind of thing that we would need to do to do that or nope nope it will just oh work. wow. Oh. Um, by deep by default, what it will do is it will crawl your site. So as long as you have links to the other pages, then which you do in this particular case, you're fine. Um, if you okay. did have um, like if you needed to query WordPress to get a list because you don't have links, that would be fine too. But you would configure that in your next config. Oh, there's all okay. the yeah. Those are your so paths. If, if you have a look oh, cool. now in your dot, dot output folder. Um, dot output will have um, your like this is it will have a server. I think this should be empty. Oh, and it has a server generated. too. Oh, okay. Not not, not generate. If you run build, it will. You can deploy this to serverless hosting, Cloudflare, whatever. But okay. um, in this particular case, we run generate, which is just the static. So if you have a look <clears throat> in public, um, you'll see that not alongside the JavaScript, which is underscore next, you also have all of the individual pages, um, and each page. Um, we'll have it, the payload that goes with it, and the HTML. Okay. So the HTML, oh, wow. Um, wow. So the payload is all the data. So that that's the equivalent of your API call. And we won't call the API call. Instead, we'll hit this underscore payload.js. And actually, that um, just means it's it's sort of decoupled and fast. Yeah, because you, that, you know, You're I'm not sure. hitting a runtime API. Um, wow. and, the, and the HTML is obviously pre-rendered for you. Um, it doesn't mm -hmm. include the data in it. Um, it just has the actual HTML. So you, um, this is a very performant way of if you have something like a, a CMS and you need to pre-render stuff, this yeah. works. Um, and and so you, you won't have won't have runtime API calls. Um, oh, that's that cool. might, might not might not be a problem. Like if you have got a good API um, going going on you, your CMS. You want to change things on the fly, then you probably don't want this. But if for mm -hmm. some reason you do need to. Then it's worth knowing about these this payload extraction feature, which um, is, yeah. is there. Um, if you well, and it means you could like not even have a, a hosted WordPress site too. Like I think that was in Jason Langsdorf's most recent like unhackable WordPress video. That's sort of what he did, where he's like, "I've got this whole site locally. Yep. I generate it, and I think that was Astro, but it was Astro. You no, know, yeah. then I just upload it, and my site's live, and like nobody, there's nothing to hack." Just drop um, the so files cool, into the yeah. yeah into his host yeah. But I or, love that or, it just works. That's really cool. Or you have a hosted site, but you have it locked down, and mm -hmm. the um like the the key to access it or whatever is only in your CI environment, and nobody else yeah. can access it. Like it's not even that somebody could hit the API and see what it is. Actually, only at build time are you able to hit it. So um. Because I think you know, locking it down on your own machine works fine if you're a dev. But if you're collaborating yeah, with yeah, other people, no, you exactly. Would, <laughs> exactly. Need to hey, come over to my house and house, write this blog post yeah. for me. Yeah, that's <laughs> not going to fly. Um, no, that's really cool. Um, and so this server file, you mentioned that, and like uh, when I think about what what is is this? This is supposed to be empty, or, uh, or you said we need to run empty. npm run run build. Exactly. If you if you're running um npm run generate, then it, it that it's just saying we want the HTML. But if you run okay. npm run build, you'll get a server, um, and it will go in that server folder. And is so, this the um, same server endpoint that we would get if we just run ran npm run build, like for the default sort of node deployment? So if you run npm run build, you'll get a node server. Um, okay. If that uh, if you run npm run build in Versal, you'll get a Versal. Format server. If you run it in Netlify, you've got a Netlify format server, um, and you can also specify this um, yourself. There's a node server. There's also a node cluster server, which is pretty cool. It starts like ten node servers, oh, wow. and they handle requests between them. But um, yeah, if you run that, then what you'll find is uh, that uh, you have a server super fast called start, um, and you should then be able to use to do everything the same. Um, it's just at one time um oh, nice. it'll still be making the request like the, those would be dynamic requests that are happening um but uh if you are doing this by the way one thing that is worth right. like in this case a blog one of the easiest ways to add um to superpower um any server if you go to your next config 
um, <clears throat> we can enable root rules. Um, so uh, alongside modules and runtime config, you can uh, create a new key called root rules, which is, um, yeah, there we go. Um, root, root, uh, root rules, capital yeah. R after, yeah. And it's an object. Um, and each key is a, a pattern, like a single page or a pattern. In this case, we probably want the entire site to be covered. So do a string uh, forward slash star star. Okay. Forward slash. And oh no, hold on. Sorry, I got a new keyboard and this this layer thing is messing with me for a second. So I gotta go to my handy dandy cheat sheet. Star star. Yes, yeah, star. Okay. Great. And that's gonna take an object. Um, and we can pass um, like uh, various different things. So um, you can configure all kinds of different things. You could make this SSR false, like these routes are going to be, in this case, this is your whole site. Oh, okay. I did, I, I did okay. Star, 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 so that's everything. But um, you could like, configure different things. In this case, set SWR true. And what that will do by default is it, you can also pass a number of seconds. Okay. I do still, still, yeah, still, still while rebounding. Is that what that so what you get? Exactly. What you get is this is set on a node server environment. It's one second. So it's not a lot. Like it's still refreshed every second. But what it means is that however many requests come in in that second, they're all getting the same response. So it caches it all. And then the next second uh, a request comes in, it gets the previous um, data as well. And then a new request is made in the background. So you basically get super fast, super up to date. Um, if you do, if you basically if you don't have any user customized um, content on your site, so no no okay. off. Yeah, this is a really really easy way of having a site which is constantly up to date, but oh, much awesome. much faster because now instead of having to hit that API every time, um, you are actually only hitting the API once every second at most. Um, and so it okay. really improves per the performance of, of that from the next end. Although you're and about to tell me that there's an amazing performance. Well, the... I was, well, no, I just think that compare, cause right, like that's still gonna refresh after every second and like second. that's that's awesome. Yeah. But it, it sounds a lot like the setup Jason has on wpgraphql.com, which is like next, what ISR, that's what it's called, right? Yeah, ISR yep. with WP GraphQL smart cache, which basically, caches the results of those queries at in like the varnish layer on our network yeah so that all that stuff is just super fast from both sides right like you're, you're getting it cached over here you're getting it cached on the network and if you make changes in the wordpress admin like it'll update and invalidate that you know the graphql cache so definitely check that out um we'll throw that link and make sure you keep that in the show notes um all right I do feel like we we advertise deploying to Atlas, so I feel like I got to do that at some point. Um, <laughs> so let me let me hit that hit that off right now. Um, I waited until the end, and let's see. Let's just call this Nux. Yeah, I will. I'm definitely going to take what we started here, Daniel, and like make this our yeah our default Nux WordPress starter. I, I, we don't do have it. another one, so I don't need to do three. I'm um, do it private for now, and I'll. Publish it once, get all the goodness in there. Um, all right, so back in here, let's. And then I guess, do we want, should we, should we take output? That's probably not recommended, right? What do you mean? No, uh, that should not get ignore. Sucked. Dot output should, should get that. Oh, and it's already, it already by default. Ignored. Yeah, I'm silly. I'm so silly. Get an okay. No, it's like a perfect reasonable <laughs> point. The uh... I know, but I'm just like the the story of Nux for us. This is like, how do we do this sensible thing? And it's like, well, it does it for you. You know, like with the generate, you don't have to do anything. You just run npm run generate. So I should have trusted trusted Nux. Um, all right, so let's add this. Remote and then push. Um, and then we've already, so we've technically already, so like this is, I guess I don't need to pass in an environment variable, right? I've already got that here. Um, well, effectively, your default value. Um, okay. And you could override it with a different one. With an you environment don't need to. variable. Okay. And I don't, I don't want to. Um, all right. So let's make sure all that's there. 
Boom. Oh, the one thing I do want to change. Okay, so I got to make it just a change for for our platform. Uh, I need oh, to add the, a build start script? command. Uh, no, nah. so uh, the build, it's going to run NPM it, build by default, uh, and then it's going to run whatever is an NPM start. And I believe that that is, should be node, right? Yeah. And then I want to run dot output server uh -oh, MJS. Exactly. Index.mjs. Um, Index.mjs. And let me, can I ask a question? What does the MJS stand for? What I've, that extension? That is um, saying this is a, na a native uh, node ESM file. So okay. it uses Im import and export uh, syntax. Uh, it's a module, but it's not, doesn't have to be transpiled like a lot of uh, ESM syntax okay. does. It's a native gotcha. node one. Um, and node is very sensitive to the um, file extension. Um, so if you name it .js, then it, it will, will get angry. It will, it will, Unless you've set type module in your project, then .js means cjs. Um, if you set type module, then .js is fine, but um, .mjs is always safe. Okay, which is which is why we've gone. For that. Yeah, good good <laughs> default. Okay, and so we'll we'll see how this works. Um, the only thing I didn't well, I didn't have this in my example or this. I don't think really either of those things should really matter. Um, but yeah, we'll go. And if it, if it doesn't work, we can, we can troubleshoot for a second. So I'm just going to pop open, uh, this head into the Atlas platform. <coughs> just click create app. I'm going to pull from my own repo. And then it should say next WordPress starter. There Get that. Is. Yeah, and we'll send it to the US Central. Main. Uh, in this instance, I'm just going to say I already have it. Um, send it to the one we use. We said we don't need environment variables, um, mm -hmm. although we could specify them there if we want to. So we'll click create app and it's going to spin for a minute. Um, it's definitely not as fast as Vercel. <laughs> um, so we're working on it we're working on it. i'm sometimes just also amazed that a company as big as wp engine built this thing from the ground up to like i mean yeah it was yeah certainly could have just rested on their laurels but it's it's really it's really nice to have this um because for me when i was doing this stuff uh outside of wp engine this was the biggest part that was like the management of all the things was just like one of the biggest barriers to doing the headless WordPress work. Cause it was like, okay, well, I've got this vendor over here. I've got this vendor over here. Um, and so this obviously just sort of collapses a lot of that for you. And then, like I said, with WP GraphQL smart cache, like we can do a bunch of optimizations on like the inside of that networking part to make, make stuff super fast. Um, so cool. Is that anything else? While that's building, Daniel, anything else you think we should know about Nux? Anybody got any questions in the chat? Now would be a great time while we're waiting um, or anything you want me to like show in more detail. I yeah, just dropped a, right. Yeah, just our tw on the 21st for North America. Uh, we have our Decode uh, developer conference. Jeff Wool has a talk on there. Um, and there's going to be a lot of uh, thought leadership uh, in the actual space on yeah. where the web is going. So that'll be something... For you guys to what check are the out general things? limitations of using GraphQL with WordPress? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think they're like so. One of the things that that tends to happen is WP GraphQL by default uses post requests. Um, not all like not all WordPress hosting is the same. Uh, so you, your mileage may vary there. Uh, obviously there are ways that you can speed it up using like get requests and stuff. Uh, like you see with smart cache over here. Um, but yeah, I mean, we definitely see people DDoS their WordPress servers all the time, just because yeah. they'll run through and build a thousand pages all at once. And, <laughs> and we see that happen a lot with like some of the other providers, like Netlify is an example, like I think one, they, they were like sending a hundred requests a second to this person's WordPress site. And it was like, like through the, through post requests. Right. And, and that's just the thing. It's like, 
the WordPress hosting is optimized for a specific thing, which is like page caching and like, you know, object cache. And it it's its own deal. And so WP GraphQL is really like outside the box for a lot of that. Um, other than that, like, I mean, it's pretty compatible with the REST API. It does all the same security checks. So it won't let you mutate data unless you're logged in, unless it's a comment. So like anything, it, it, those same security and capability checks happen. Um, Fran, you got anything else? And then plugins, like obviously the plugins, you're yeah, using that's plugins, it has to have an extension. You can write your own extensions, yep. but we're watching that part of the ecosystem grow a lot right now, which is really cool to see but you can run into some issues where like not every aspect of the plugin is supported by the GraphQL extension, yeah. like gravity forms for one, there's like one thing that you can't do in gravity forms because like WP GraphQL just doesn't have the abstraction for it yet. Um, so you get in that. Did you get all custom post types in their fields? Oh yes. I'm sorry. That was a question. Let me show you how to do that real quick. I actually didn't on this version. Um, but if I come back into my first query uh, and I do this, like, I think I had food resources. Yeah, you did. Once I add that extension, I can just do that on there. And then, you know, I got recipe link, recipe name. And then if I want to add sweet mixtape, I can do that Exposing too. the schema. Yeah, it's, uh, and I forget what that's, track title, artist, yeah. track title, and then album. Yep. And then if I rerun that query it'll all come back um so and, look out um, for that yeah because that i didn't do in the example i should have thank you for reminding me um and then for like it's really cool for y'all that are actually interested in extending the wp graphql uh plugin with your own customized extension i'm actually gonna publish an article on how to make a customized functionality to extend wp graphql and test it with the wp graphql test case library so that mm -hmm. it uh, doesn't essentially break it's like a kind of test driven development uh, article i'm going to put out so uh, stay yeah. stay tuned for that as well so cool there's our there's our site We've got everything we had locally rolling blocks data is all actually working yeah too, this is, is really cool and that's live um, on and then just a couple things about this like you know it, it's a, it's not a serverless platform so it's definitely still a server yeah there's a full container, node which, server yeah, can be cool and can be not. Um, but we've got a lot of the affordances most people expect out of sort of a JavaScript platform. If you want to do PR previews, flip this on and then any PRs to that repo will trigger a whole new environment. You got rebuild webhooks. And so you can hook up your own system or you can use like there's a bunch of webhook plugins in WordPress that'll, you know, trigger your thing to build um, password protection. So definitely if you're interested in any of that, check out some of the content, the docs, um, drops any questions if you got them. Cool. It was very yeah. cool. It is Thanks, very Daniel, cool. for coming on. Appreciate yeah, you guys. thank you so much. This has been super valuable. Like, yeah. I've learned so much. I mean, just the dev tools was just that was That was surprise. like, yeah, I'm going to start, I'm going to mess around with the next as soon as I get off the call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, All right. awesome. I All right, y'all. Like way over Thank time you. now. Yeah, yep. definitely. Thanks. Thanks again, Daniel. Thanks to everybody for for dropping by and hanging with us for like an hour and a half. Really, yeah, hour forty five yeah. minutes. This is awesome. Cheers, y'all. Awesome. Bye. Yeah. Thanks, y'all. Bye.